all right welcome back in this session i'm going to show you how to first i'm going to save it so you already know how to do that but i'm going to click on save as it's going to save document without, without rebuilding which is fine because i moved some of the parts and i will save this as exercise nine practice or let's call it mate mates this way you'll know that this is your mate mating uh, exercise okay you're just learning how to mate things you're not really creating an exercise and going uh, the entire steps okay so let's go ahead and bring this part closer to here okay and I just want to show you a couple things so these edges right here are going to be mating around these edges right here so basically right now if you notice that they are perpendicular to each other this one and this one so I need to somehow rotate this rod to have it uh, uh, parallel around these parts right here so first thing you can do is click on mate and let's click on one of the surfaces of the base and then on my rod and you're going to notice the rod right away flips okay and it places this not really perpendicular uh, parallel but coincident coincident means the surface is onto the sur is on the surface so for example if i click on okay to accept this okay and i take my part and, and move it around say let's put this into a certain view Okay, you're going to see that the surface right here is right on the surface. So if I put this to my right side view, all right, you're going to see that they're right on top of each other. I'm going to click on cancel over here, right on top of each other. Okay, put this back into the right side view. If I move, I can only move this back and forth now. I cannot move it up and down. Now, that's one way of doing it. You can also make it parallel. So to edit a mate, you can come back over here under the mate, click on coincident. And click on edit feature so again coincident uh, mates are basically like a surface on top of a surface where the co they're coincidence exactly what they are they're touching okay and so that's how you made it but you're only doing this uh, in one direction you did not fully define the sketch you're still able to move the rod and also the rod is flipped to its side okay now there's a lot of different options over here to make you can actually click on distance and create a distance between the surface and the surface or you can lock it in place where you can't move it and that's what another way to fully define it you can also angle it as well and over here like we've seen before you can also switch the fl flip it around so instead of being in one direction it's the other side that is there so it's taking this rod and just basically flipping it to the other side all right so there's also advanced mates the advanced mates will be going through these in the advanced section of SolidWorks and there's a standard mate section right here which we'll be using most of the time there's mechanical mates which we'll be going over some of them in this tutorial so you'll learn some of the mechanical mates especially in the gear section right here so you're going to have one of the chapters that will be using the gear mechanical mates okay and then if you down click on mates over here it will show you the mates that are being used in this section there's also another options over here which allows you to add to a new folder you can save those to a new folder show pop-up dialog which you already have show preview which exactly what's going on over here before you accept it it shows you the preview and use the positioning only so it just positions it without accepting the mates all right so i'm going to click on that now i already accepted it before that's why it's still there or no i'm sorry maybe i did not accept it so go back over here and click on edit feature okay no actually i did accept it i'm sorry i did accept it i couldn't tell because of the the view that i was in so that's one thing and uh, some of these things when i'm making these videos i'm gonna keep in these videos to show you uh you know certain things that may not happen until you try them and they may get you a little confused so for example right now i started to move my part and i was like wow it doesn't look like it's they're mated but they really are if i actually put this in the right view it's just the view that i was in did not allow me to see that so see i can't move this up and down i can only move it left and right so i had them made it correctly i just couldn't tell from the view that i was in okay like this view right here i can't really tell very much if i actually make it isometric then i'm really lost i feel like i'm rotating this part all the way around but i'm really not i'm staying on one axis these are these two are still featured so that the next thing i want to do is click on mate and i need now this surface to be parallel to one of these surfaces over here because I need to flip my rod around so that's how you have to think about it you're gonna have to think like okay how do I want this surface I need this surface to be parallel to this surface okay because I need my rod to be flipped I need to mate them somehow so my rod flips around so what, what you can do is click on the surface and then click on the surface now 
you're not going to get the correct option always. All right. Because right now SolidWorks uh, says uh, I set them up to be coincident, but I don't want them to be coincident. I don't want the surface to be coincident with the surface. I actually just want them to be parallel. So just click on the parallel and now they're parallel. So that means I can still move this up and down, but the surfaces can be parallel. And then click on OK to accept it. So now if I rotate this part, all right, I'm moving this, uh, you know, back and forth. But this surface is parallel to this surface. What's nice about this is that now I'm moving my part back and forth over here. And the rod is exactly up and down. So really the only thing that allows me to lock this part in place is to make sure that this surface and this surface are coincident. So I clicked on both of them and SolidWorks already gives me the option to be coincident. So all I need to do is accept it. And now the entire assembly is not fully defined because there's another part here that I can move around. But really, we fully defined these three. Why? Because now I can't move this part at all. Oops, I'm sorry. I, yes, I can. Okay, so that's why it's still underdefined. So that I'm going to keep this mistake over here because I actually thought that I fixed this part in place. So what is what was there left? So I moved this part. I made sure that the bottom of this is on top of the surface. I made sure that this surface is parallel to this surface. And then I made sure that this surface on the inside is coincident to this surface. So why can I still move it? Because I never locked it. To, I never told it where this location of this um, you know needs to be. And so one last thing we need to do is give it, let's, for example, you can do it in a bunch of different ways. There's no right and wrong way to do this. But you can either, for example, select a distance between the radius or the, you know, the surface of this part. And for example, this surface. So right now, if I select both of them right away, it's going to give me a tangent. Well, I don't want it to be tangent because I want this to be lo located on the middle right here somewhere. So let's go ahead and click on distance. Now distance will allow me to create a, a certain distance between here and here. Now this make cannot be solved. Okay. And the reason for that, let's go ahead and try it and see what it gives me. So the reason for that, I'm going to, I'm going to tell it, I want it to be one inch away from there. All right. And then I'm going to click on. Okay. So I, I, I deselected my surface. So let's go ahead and select the surface again. And then I'm going to select one inch. Uh, I'm going to select maybe 0.9 to make it a little bit more centered. And then click on OK. Now it says the selected mate could not be successfully added. Would you like to force this mate to solve? OK, now click on yes. There's actually an option that allows you to go back and, uh, and will tell you uh, what's wrong. And it will allow, gives you the options to be able to solve it. Now, for example, it says air mates. The mate folder of the following problem. One or more mates are not satisfied. To correct this, examine the mates with red error and or icon. Some updates could be solved. Consider deleting unsolved mates. Dragging the assembly uh, closer to the desired solution, dragging more mates to further define the assembly, changing the mating schemes, and for there on and therefore. So you're gonna run into this. That's why I'm keeping this in tutorial. You're gonna run into something that does not uh, is not gonna be able to mate, and you're gonna run into the issue, and it will say no solution found. So close out of that. And sometimes there are certain things that cannot mate to each other. All right. For for example, you know I'm not able to drive it in here maybe because it's gonna the one inch away from here will uh, drive this part to be inside of this part right here, and it will not allow me to solve it because now I have two parts inside of each other. So that could be a reason why. So I'm gonna click on exit right here real quick, and you're gonna see all these mates that are wrong. So, so the ones with these quotation marks uh, on the left side of them, you can actually click and try to uh, you know fix by trying to figure out like where the problem is over here. But right now, because I have so many errors, I'm gonna click on Control Z to undo that because I created more problems than I want to sit and try to solve. Whenever it's one thing that it goes wrong, you can solve it. But when it's a lot of things, you definitely don't want to try to figure out what they are. It can take you hours. So let's go ahead and solve it in a different method. I'm going to click on mate again. This time, I'm going to click on this point right here. Just, it's just a uh, point that connects this radius to this, to this line, and then this point right here. Now what that does, again, it gives you the coincident um, option but this time click on the distance okay now this gives the, gives you a distance of 0.1 let's go ahead and make it uh, a little bit more even you know just 0.1 enter and it will move it accordingly to where you want it to be placed and click on okay click on okay to exit it again it will stay under defined because of the part right here but right now I can't move this part or this part while well, this part I already know it's fixed but this part right now I cannot 
move it. And if you look over here, the minus sign is gone on the left side of the rod because I can't move that part anymore. It's not floating anymore. So there we go. So we basically right now made it this section, the, the rod, to the base. So the base is basically, you know, they'll be sitting around uh, like that. I'm going to put it normal too. Okay. The part and I'll rotate it a little bit. So it's kind of like sitting like this. And now this is the base holding up the rod. And now I want to put this one basically in, in uh, this ring over here into the rod. Okay. And I'll show you a couple methods of how to do this uh, in our next session.